Module scripts are a special type of script that contain reusable variables, functions, and other code. They allow us to create modular code that can easily be shared and used across multiple different scripts. Now, just to provide you the full context, I have my Explorer displaying right here, and I have a module script object right here. Now, beside that, I just added a brand new script object. So I wanted to point out that module scripts are not just a specific way of creating or writing your script. Module scripts are literally different objects than scripts entirely. So now when you create a module script and you actually open it up, the module script will actually contain some code inside of it. So by default, module scripts contain a module variable, which is set to an empty table. And finally, at the bottom of the script, we have a return statement and we are actually returning the module variable. Now we're going to be using this module variable, which is an empty table as a dictionary. We'll use it to store variables, functions, and other code we want to share with other scripts. Now, usually when creating module scripts, you actually rename the module variable to the subject of this module. So I'm going to rename the module variable to pets manager. And then I'm also going to update the return statement as well to match that same variable. Now, as you can tell, the module name follows a different naming convention, which is actually known as Pascal case. So the first letter of each word in the variable is actually capitalized. And for the most part, we relatively only use this for the module variable. Now let's add a variable to this table. This variable is going to be called max equipped pets, and the value should be set to three. Considering we've learned how to add key value pairs to dictionaries before, you should know how to do this. So I'll give you about five seconds to do this yourself. And with that being said, this is the solution that I expected you to have. Previously in our tables video, I taught you how to add key value pairs to dictionaries. When we went over that, I said to index the table with the specific key, and then we can use the equal sign to set the value of that key value pair. Now there's actually another way to add key value pairs to tables. The other way that we can do that is referred to as dot index. So we can write out the pets manager variable, and then we can use a period. Now when we type out the period, we might actually get an auto completion suggestion for us that says max equipped pets. And the reason for that is because we just stored that key value pair inside of the dictionary so we can now access it. Instead of accessing it though, let's go ahead and actually set it once again. So we're going to set it to three. So now we see two different ways we can add key value pairs to this dictionary. Now there is actually one more way that you could write this. And that's when we actually create the pet manager table inside of that empty table, you could add the key value pair directly inside of there. Now that's really unorganized and you would never actually do that. I just wanted to show you all of the different ways to hopefully really help cement this knowledge. So we're going to delete this line of code as well, because the most common way of adding key value pairs to a dictionary is using the dot index right here. Now adding a function is a little bit different, similar to how we added the variable. We don't use the keyword local. So we just type out the word function. Then we use the pets manager variable. We index that table. And now we type out the name of the function. And we're going to name this function get equipped pets. And all it's going to do is return the number zero. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about scope. Any members of the module script, such as variables, functions, or other code that we want to actually share with the other scripts, all of that code needs to be written between where we create the module variable and where we return the module variable. We touched on the return keyword during the iteration video. So you should already know that you're not able to add any code after a return statement. So that's why all the code has to be written at least before the return statement. And the reason that you need the shared code to be written after the module variable is created is because otherwise we can't add that to the table. So let's say we try to use the pets manager variable right here and add just anything to it. We can see that that gives us the error unknown global pets manager because the variable that we're trying to use was not actually created yet. Now, another thing is that inside of module scripts, you're perfectly fine with using the local keyword and anything local that you create in this script, we can still add that to the module and then share that with other scripts. So if we look at the max stored pets variable, for example, right here, we have a local variable named that. And we also added this as a key value pair to the pets manager dictionary. So our key is max stored pets. And then we set the value to this variable right here. So the value would be 100. I also added the R max pets stored function because inside of this function, I'm showing that we can still use local variables inside of these shared functions as well. So what we're currently doing right here is comparing the amount of pets that the player has stored and checking if that number is greater than or equal to the local max stored pets value, which we can see right here is 100. Now let's actually talk about using a module script. In order to use a module script, you need to use either a local or server script and require that module script to sort of activate it. Local scripts and server scripts all run on their own as soon as the game starts. Whereas with module scripts, they will only run when one of those two scripts actually requires them. And we're using the word requires here to mean that those server or local scripts are using something from those modules. So what we'll do is we'll add a brand new server script inside of the server script service. Inside of our server script, we're going to create a variable called server script service. Now we've never done this before. We haven't gone over this topic. We'll actually cover that in hopefully the next episode, but we're going to be using a global variable called game. Now this object has a couple of functions that we can use. And after we type out the word game, we're then going to use a colon. And then we're going to type out the word get service, which is actually a function. And we're going to pass through a string to this function, which is server script service. Okay. So the value of this function is literally pointing 
to the server script service that's inside of our explorer. This might be a little confusing for you. Don't worry, just follow along. Now that we have access to the server script service, we can then use the module script that we just created. So we're going to create a variable called pet manager, and we're going to set the value of that equal to require. So the require keyword, which is a global function, and the argument that we have to pass through to this global function is a module script. So the module script that we want to pass through to here is the module script inside of the server script service named module script. And now that we've done that, if we type out pet manager and then a period, we can see all of the members that we actually have access to. So we have access to two functions and also two variables right here as well. So now if we want to use any of those functions, we can go ahead and just call our max pet stored and then we could pass through the number 10 as the argument. We could also even print out one of the variables from that module. So max stored pets, that would print out 100 because remember the local variable that we're actually using as a value right here is set to 100. Now module scripts are amazing and they are used in so many different ways, even in more ways than simply just sharing code between different scripts. Some people only write all of their code using module scripts. They only use a single server script or local script to require and activate all of those module scripts. That's just one example of an extended thing you can do with module scripts, but as you continue to learn developing on Roblox, you're going to see the magnitude of things that you can actually use module scripts for. As of right now, I'd probably recommend only using module scripts for what I just taught you, which is sharing code between different scripts, because that's what they do with their simplest form. And even at their simplest form, they are so, so useful. You're going to be using module scripts all the time. I promise.